After you've had your CNC machine for a while and done numerous contour cuts, you will inevitably be drawn towards the world of V-carving. And as we can see by the examples here, you can get some stunning results. Um, the major stumbling block for me was finding some software that was reasonably priced. Um, many of these examples are using the V-carve uh, software and that's several hundred euros, several hundred dollars to, uh, to purchase and I'm not even sure how much V-carving I'm going to do ultimately. So I've been looking around for uh, alternatives and I've come across this um, product by Carbide 3D, Carbide Create and although this is aimed at their own CNC machines. Uh, I see no reason why it shouldn't work for, for mine. And also they offer some, uh, some free courses and there's online documentation. So it all looks, uh, all looks very good. Okay, it may seem to be a little basic, but uh, for me that's quite refreshing having been banging my head against the wall with things like uh, Fusion 360 recently. So, Let's take a look and uh, see if we can get some useful results from this software. You will need to register to get a link to download the, the software. To start with, select your stock size. I've got a sheet 230 millimeters square. Yeah, it's just a piece of scrap ply 2.12 millimeters deep. And I'm referencing the tool paths from the top of the sheet. You have the option there to select the bottom. I prefer to have the lower left as my XY00. The material is just a uh, soft wood. Uh, the machine, we can leave that as the shape BOCO3, it doesn't really matter. And a retract height, uh, I don't need to go so high, I don't think. So let's say three millimeters, okay that. You may be tempted um, to do something complicated like this uh, print of Hannibal crossing the Alps, but um, it's more reasonable to start off with something simple and traditionally that would be just a name plaque, so we're going to go with that. We select in the design is already underlined for us. We select the text tool, for example, and the font I'm going to use is Kandara uh, Bold and the text that I want to use will be my channel name. The height of my characters I'm going to set to say 25 millimeters. That's nearly one inch in old money. And we've got the name there. So let's put that roughly near the top there. With the text in place, we can then choose our tool path for it. In the tool path, we want to use VCarve for the lettering. And at this point, you can edit this and choose the tool that you need. Now, what I've done, I've already gone in and edited the library. Um, these are all imperial measurements, and I'm a metric kind of guy these days. So I've uh, put in my own settings for my V-shaped milling bit, and a diameter 22, Foot length and the angles, it's a 60 degree. <coughs> so as it says per side, so that's 30 degrees per side and just the two flutes there. So I've already done that. So that's the tool selected at the top. Unless you know otherwise, it's probably best to let the program determine the speeds and feeds on its own. That references back to the material that you selected when you set the design up in the first place. So for the softwood, this is the type of, uh, of speeds we can expect. And we'll just OK that. And it's going to call it Toolpath 1. With our text in place, let's create a, uh, a nice border to cut out. Select a circle. And by the way, up here we have Snap to Grid, which is currently on. If we select our center and say go up from the center, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. We can then simply do Control C uh, to duplicate our circle. 
and place that say over here let's choose our rectangle shape now what we can do is holding down the control key we select each of the shapes and do a boolean union on that then we can get our outline shape that looks quite good and then we can move it into place that looks good right there our tool path is going to be a contour I've chosen my 3 mil end mill here we're going to use the stock top and the stock bottom as our max depth of cut and let's put some tabs in there so that the material doesn't come loose now the tab width I only really want two millimeters and the tab height is just over the width of the material so let's say we'll have a tab at each end roughly in the center and at these points here as well a total of eight tabs and if we go back we can see now we have our two tool paths and if we look at the simulation that should be more or less what our end result is going to be and that looks uh, okay for me obviously we need to change between the two tools the end mill and the, the v-bit so if we take the the last operation and temporarily disable that and we can save the g-code just for for toolpath one so we'll call that um, info YouTube what I like to do is to simulate the g-code first so that uh, before I even put it on the machine I can be reasonably happy with it so I've opened the g-code in notepad plus plus that's uh, my favorite editor and if we go back to the window here let's just select all and delete what's there and paste in our code and press simulate and this is the resultant uh, information so x and y as within our stock the z is going to go down as far as minus 4.668 now unlike a contour cut the v cut needs to go deeper than the stock to achieve the v carve shape so we just need to be aware of that and make sure that we've got material underneath our stock rather than cutting into our, our baseboard so that's useful information to know there so we're going to need as well as our 2.1 we're going to need another piece of scrap material underneath this to avoid cutting into our baseboard if we go back now and disable the first tool path and enable this path again we can save the g-code for shape once again in our simulator just delete what's there paste in our code and simulate and here now there is no surprise we can see the x and y parameters that we're going to need and the z the maximum is the thickness of the of the stock this being just a contour cut time to move on to our machine and get cutting i've set my x and y zero points here on the machine what i need to do next is to set my z values so I'm just using my little Z probe here. I showed in a previous video how to configure that. And we simply go to switch the machine on, do our measure offset Z. Offset current Z and then click offset z again 
and that puts us to 25 millimeters above the surface which is the height of the Z sensor here plus five millimeters so now I can remove that and now we're ready to start our job not forgetting our safety apparatus so here's the result of this test and remember this is just a piece of scrap uh, ply in fact I think this came in the bottom of the, the, the box that the CNC came in just as packing it looks a bit ragged obviously but uh, all of the of the lettering um, is, has the the proper V carve uh, shape to it obviously I've missed um, the middle of the O's and the A's but uh, in reality I'll be using uh, much thicker material than this and I think the tabs worked out well as well some of them are broken out already because the the sheet has warped um, but these would uh, take no time at all to uh, to remove with a with a Dremel or or just with a file and uh, clean that up. Here we can see the result in an MDF. Quite pleased the way it's turned out. I didn't go all the way through the board on each part, but we can see that the the tabs work well. Very pleased with that. Uh, being only MDF, it's not going to be able to give uh, super detail. As a first attempt, I'm very pleased and uh, I would urge you to take a look at the Carbide Create software yourself. Although it is basic, I think it's uh, much easier to use than many other things and uh, does the job.